Welcome to PartialArc.com. <laughs> Don't do that. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. And a lot of weird shit. Roll to seize! <laughs> Welcome to Roll to Seas. This is episode six. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and I'm joined by my co host and Warhammer enthusiast, Andrew Dickinger. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Have you settled into your chairs for a night of murder? And more murder, because it is the Grimdark. I just got an intense flashback of, I think it's Tales from the Hood for some <laughs> reason. <laughs> <laughs> you started that sentence, I heard Tales, I'm like, Tales of the Crypt, of course, or Tales from the Crypt, and then uh, you did Tales from the Hood. Hey so. man, don't discredit Tales from the Hood. It's uh, it's the best programming we'll ever have or ever know. It, it educates you on the uh, the dark tales of the streets, man. It does. A lot of supernatural shit, man. A lot of supernatural stuff, which is obviously what most people are talking around this time of the year, guys, because it is that weird supernatural time between Christmas and and New Year's, right? Which is when, like, the, the world's in flux? Isn't that, like, a rule? No? Is this a... What? You don't know about this? I'm confused. Oh, my this. God. I hope everyone's inside right now when you're listening to this. You shouldn't be outside. I mean, absolutely not during these few weird days. You don't you don't know about the gravity shifts or... Gravity shifts. Holy crap. I mean, it just this must be a me. coincidence that you have made it this long. Amazing. Lucky. That's <laughs> what I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, um, it is that weird time where we've just passed over the uh, the holidays. We're now coming up to New Year's. We, uh, strangely, because of this podcast coming out at the end of the month, we always seem to run into the holidays recently. Yeah, we ran into... To, you know, October, we had Halloween. Mm-hmm. And then that little unknown holiday that no one knows about. Yeah, that little unknown holiday. And then we had the the Turkey Day. The Turkey Day. We worship the, the Turkey God so they don't come from space and kill us all. And devour us afterwards. I mean, Yeah. Very important holiday. Very important tradition. Kind there. of backwards gods, too. They're like, the way you worship the Turkey Gods is by eating loads of turkey. Yeah, really strange. I think they're cannibal Turkey Gods. We're not sure, of course. The texts have been lost through a lot of different uh, versions and translations, but, you know, who knows, right? <laughs> as long as they're happy. Space turkey gods. Space turkey gods. You take away one thing from this episode. Guys, as we kick off the beginning of each one of our episodes, we're going to talk about our seasons of the month. I'll kick things off. Oh, you're going first. I'm going to go first this time. Okay. All right. All right. Now, we need to do the knife game where I stick my hand out and you stab it a bunch. You don't I mean, know how to play that game. I don't know. It kind of ended badly last yeah, time. Yeah, I did. You stabbed my hand a bunch. Oh, I thought that I thought you were supposed to not miss the hand. Not miss the hand? I mean... <laughs> You, you were, if that's the rules, you were very good. Very good at that game. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to go first, guys. My season of the month, um, we just, I just came fresh off of a tournament over the last week, and boy, did I hit a, a snag in one game. In this tournament, I decided to try out a new list. Now, if you guys know, I, I tend to fancy Eldar. I like him. Really? Yeah. Uh, I haven't talked about some of my big favorite guys in the Eldar army, the Wraith Knights, these big powerhouse, you know, basically skyscrapers that dance around and blow stuff up. They're pretty great. They're pretty much the closest thing to a Titan that's not a Titan. That's not a Titan, right? So these Wraith Knights, instead of going stock, which um, some people do, some people don't, I decided to take the leap and finally go for the Sun Cannon. Oh, I was just going to say, oh, what's unique about this is that, you know, people, the internet is very... You know, fifty fifty divided on, on the sun cannon. Uh, yeah, because I mean, its its base cost is still very expensive, mm-hmm. and so you know, yeah, some people are like, well, no, it's better is just taking stock because then you can just jump and get cover saves instead of the invul save, and use the strength ten weapons to blow up vehicles and then assault what's inside, it, and then you get the other half of the internet that's like, no, the sun cannon is and the shield is the only way to go because it just decimates infantry, and they're like, but it's three hundred points, and you're just, <laughs> just blah, blah 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 blah, it's just rabble rabble back and forth yeah the the two mobs fighting and throwing things at one another and it's you know there's some good points there they one is definitely great at doing one specific thing and the other at another side so i just wanted to try them out i instead of doing one wraith knight with one sun cannon instead decided to do two so i've got two wraith knights both with sun cannons because i just wanted to melt tons of things mostly space marines but i wanted to melt a lot of things and infantry so i wanted to try them out now for two of the three games that i played they did phenomenally well they melted infantry they burned out a lot of tyrannids which was pretty fun but 
In one game in particular, I really noticed the error that I had made. One, maybe investing so much, maybe 600 points, in things that do exactly the same thing. Basically a third of your army. Basically a third of my army, if we're playing 1850 here. And these things are great, guys, at blowing up infantry. And I've never been a big fan of the templates, just because typically they'll scatter off. But three templates with a scatter laser so you get to reroll. Not so bad. Yeah, you'll hear from Jay and I. We tend to not favor blast templates in general because we have terrible luck with scatter. Terrible luck. It's so it'd be maybe like, you guys are great, but not us. It's like, oh, I have that one awesome thing that's like BS seven because it boosted. Because you know, I like Tau and play marker lights. <laughs> oh, let me roll the gets hot roll. Oh, it's a one that doesn't fire. Awesome. I love this gun. <laughs> or any real weapon that just has a single shot is just not usually my jam. It's just I'm gonna. I know on a three plus. BS or BS4, I'm gonna roll a one or a two most of the time. I mean, it's like even if you don't get that, then like you end up having your opponent just like cover saves are just all over cover the place. Cover save now. or they make that jink or I do take off one dumb whole point and I crew stun it or something like that. Who yeah. cares, really? So the real problem here is, guys, as I said, 600 points invested in not one, but two units that are not only do the same thing, but are exactly the same unit. So. I have heavily focused my army on doing one thing. They're great at taking out hordes, great at, great at taking out tons and tons of units like this, but in one of my games, I came up what you might hear about, uh, the Space Marine Bike Army, and they just, with grav guns, put my Wraith Knights into the ground before they could even fire. And now, if I had an army that had a lot of different joints and a lot of different ways to pivot on different abilities and different techniques, this wouldn't be as big as a deal, because losing maybe one Wraith Knight or one part of my army that's good at blowing out, you know, infantry, that's not that bad, but... I had two big targets dedicated to doing the same thing, which is one, not a very good thing. You want to div diversify in your army if you can. Absolutely. I also put them right next to each other. Yeah. Which is not also good. That um, may have been a mistake. Yeah, but, and also a lot of points sunk into them. Too much redundancy in one area, because my wave serpents do a lot of the same things they do when it comes to horde, but also redundancy in the same unit and an over amount of points, 600 points to two units that with grav guns, I don't know if you guys know this, are pretty popular right now and can wipe down Wraith Knights. Well, I mean, monstrous creatures in general. Oh, they yeah. They just wreck monstrous creatures. Absolutely. So, uh, by the end of my first turn, I lost uh, over 600 points of my army just right off the board, and if you can imagine, that was a pretty big detriment. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the way that Jay and I usually like to key out our lists is that the way we organize our things is like, will this thing make its points back? Either in destruction against the enemy, yep. or fulfilling some specific role that ends up being indispensable. The latter of which being harder to judge, but you could have a game where it's like, oh, this one 300 point thing was doing, you know, didn't kill 300 points. But it drew the fire away long enough to get my better units in position to do what they do best. It won you the game, essentially. Exactly. And so that's highly valuable. Oh, absolutely. But for this specific reason, my big, you know, seize of the month and big thing to take away from this is, you know, limit your redundancy if it's exactly the same model and it's a huge point sink. And when I say redundancy, maybe not in one or two models, but in this case, they were redundant to the rest of the ways that my army fought. So if I've got a lot of my army that can take on spam and, a, you know, a huge amount of horde, then maybe I need to focus on some things that are take all comers, not just one specific type. So that is my uh, season of the month. Andrew, what is yours? So my season instead, um, I've been playing my nids again. I play specifically a mostly monstrous creature Highlander list, meaning mm -hmm. Highlander is there are no copies of units. Oh, I was hoping it's Sean Connery with the sword. They're challenging people to... No, they don't? They don't cut off heads and then lightning explodes everywhere? I, get, I mean, I guess if I use, like, the Swarm Lord, he's got swords. <laughs> I guess he could just go around and just... Swarmlord special ability, there can be only, only one. one. Yeah, he just ah! he just has the ability whenever he challenges an enemy that they have to accept. They and have then, to accept, and when they die, lightning shoots out of the top of their head. The lightning shoots out of the top of their head, he gets struck by lightning, and then gets a point every stat. That How about that? would be the best. <laughs> GW, please make a Highlander actual rule points. <laughs> Um, so this nid list I play, like, it's Highlander, so everything's different, which also makes it interesting for my opponents, because they don't really know what to go after. It's right. like, well, there's that, and there's that, and there's that, and there's that, Well, that, that looks like that. a monster, that's also a monster, and that, well, that's also a monster, too. Um, this was also the first tournament, a tournament that I was using, the Demashiron, and... Right, the Demashiron 
is nasty. Um, it's probably the one of, if not the best close combat monster in the game. Yeah, I mean, it just demolishes. This is unfamiliar to you guys. Go on Forge World, check it out. It's beastly and probably highly recommended if you're a Tyranid player. Yeah, I think if you troll like uh, the the DAC of forms or anything like that, or if you just look around basically anywhere, any of the highly or even lean towards more competitive Tyranid players will automatically recommend at least one of them, especially because Nids has access to drop pods now. Oh, yes. Which can put them right in the back line, which is suddenly like, well, that thing I either need to kill or it's going to decimate half my army. Or it's going to eat probably one of my big units because this thing can eat people. Oh, exactly. Like, there's even a user that's uh, from the San Francisco Bay Area, specifically part of the Frontline Gaming Group, mm. um, named JY2 on the forums. He's, like, pretty renowned as being a uh, fair expert in Tyranids, mm-hmm. and he even one game had a Dima Shiron literally kill, like, a thousand points of the enemy army. <laughs> I mean... That's awesome. Chewed through a wolf uh, cavalry Whoa. unit, just like throwing ends to death all over the place and just killing all of them oh, and then moved on to like the next thing and then the next thing and just was just like on an unstoppable feel rampage. no painting the whole way there oh yeah i mean that's the beauty of it if he gets to chomp something that has a bunch of wounds i mean that's like basically four plus feel no pain for three to four turns which is just dumb yeah. it's just like it makes it so hard to kill it's so good um, guys we love the demon roll to seize brought to you by the demon <laughs> yeah <laughs> Was that product placement? Was, was, over, that, was that too was heavy-handed? It, or too over the top? It might have been. But in any case, so the my seize of the month is actually not about the D machine. Uh, I just too bad. I just wanted to bring that out and exclaim, "It's awesome! It's my favorite new toy." It's so great. But my seize of the month, oddly enough, is against another bike army. They seem to be pretty, uh, pretty popular these days. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely very good. Ah, those white scars. They're so dastardly. Yeah, exactly. So this guy was using uh, specifically Space Marines and Imperial Guard allies. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure the, the whole point of bringing the Imperial Guard was to either just get more melta guns or Wyvern, you know, because right. I'm sure you've heard about Wyverns and how good they are right. and how, how much I hate them. <laughs> Specifically, uh, you've heard how much Andrew hates them. Yes, I hate he them He screams so them much. from very high points around different cities, so I you pl- might have caught it at some point. I play against a wyvern, and I go up onto the roof of the building, and I just yell at the night. And right. Just, ah! <laughs> a very strange Batman, just instead of screaming at crime, <laughs> screams at the crime of wyverns. Exactly. So uh, it, was, it was definitely a very competitive list I was going against. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had the first turn. So I had an advantage, and I also managed to roll the bane of my existence, <laughs> the the master of ambush uh, warlord trait. This is like the warlord trait that just loves to like haunt you. It's like your own Marley following you around. I, it's just it just makes me it, that warlord trait just makes me my own worst enemy because I just like end up like rolling through the possibilities in my head and never thinking of what actually is the right choice. I'm just like oh, I can do this thing. I can figure out how to use this properly one day yeah so it's just like i'm pretty sure actually my last my last season of the month was was yes was i'm pretty sure it was around this <laughs> so i got this i also had like i said i also had first turn i had an immensely useful opportunity which i didn't think of at the time because i was pseudo afraid of being seized upon you know because once again lots of grav guns it's a threat to very specifically monstrous creatures oh yeah and I think I was just too afraid that he was going to roll a one of six die just because, like, I was like, I'm very superstitious with this right. sort of thing, and I've been seized like, on this a This is lot. too good of an opportunity to do something. I'm gonna get screwed somehow. I was too apprehensive, and essentially what I should have done, my flying hive tyrant was actually not my warlord, because hmm. I found that he draws tons of fire and ends up getting blown away basically every game. Right. Uh, so I had my other warlord and three units to infiltrate, and what I should have done is I should have infiltrated my flying hive tyrant and the Mm. reason for this is because he put he specifically knew his wyvern was even though i had a lot of monstrous creatures i had certain key units for an objective space game that were more useful for capturing objectives whereas half more than half of my army would just be going straight at him because they're mostly close combat right and that's the only way i'm going to be able to do any damage is if i get there and essentially surround and envelop him once again as well you know i have flying hive tyrant with double devourers against a, an av10 side armor vehicle it's a juicy for you know first blood target so yeah that's probably gonna work so i didn't end up infiltrating my flying hive tyrant and what he did is he ended up deploying his wyvern as far back 
as he possibly could. This was Vanguard deployment, so it was the diagonal. So the Wyvern was all the way back on the furthest point, Mm -hmm. essentially. So even at the tip of my deployment zone, I still would not be in range of this thing moving up. Right, because he foresaw that this was going to be... Obviously, exactly. the n- primary target of what you're going for. Exactly. And then, and so I made the mistake of mis- misjudging him and then not thinking of the rule clearly myself and being like, oh, he really highly values this thing. I need to take it out quickly. And if I had infiltrated, then I would have been in range to kill it. And because of that, essentially ended up taking off or killing most of my bodyguard units. So you didn't end up infiltrating at all? No, I infiltrated other things. Okay. But you didn't infiltrate the Flying Hive Tyrant that was going to be the one to gun down this wyvern. Yeah, I didn't. I specifically did not infiltrate the one thing that could actually threaten that vehicle on the first turn. Oh, damn it. So it would take like a full two turns. And the other uh, other stupid thing, I'm not used, I'm still not used to the new Psychic phase. I also managed to get Psychic Scream, which if you don't know from the Tyranids Codex, it's a Nova power. A Coming Nova out from power. Them, right? It's a six inch Nova that any units within it take a leadership test on 2d6 plus two. And however, however much they fail it by, they take that many wounds with no armor or cover saves allowed. And so specifically against something like bikes, they have a three, whoop. well, space marine bikes with white scars that have a three plus jink mm-hmm. and everything. This could have just also, if I had infiltrated him, could have put him in, literally in range of three squads to just to psychic, whoop, scream psychic scream nuke them. and potentially kill at least one or two from each squad, which would have been, I mean, that's a big deal in yeah. bikes specifically with bikes because it's a very min max army it's you have very select small units that do a lot of damage but can't take hits right um so yeah it was just it was just poor planning on my part in general and i mean that you know some of the roles went badly and everything towards the game but really that misstep when i had a golden opportunity to take a really big lead in the beginning of the game essentially cost me the game Oof. oh well oh well guys always infiltrate flying hive tyrants especially if you hate wyverns and yes. scream at them in in the darkness of the night all right guys well that was our seasons of the month so that'll be taking us into our segment of the brown library So I, I, it's odd. There, how, how is there snow in yeah, here? How is there snow in here? It's really weird. Um, isn't this in a place between dimensions? Yeah, like, I don't know how they would get this in here. You know what it is? It's Papa Logan Grimnar must have come running through here after the holidays and just snow went everywhere. He was riding his merry sleigh saying, ho, ho, ho. Through the webways. Glorious gifts upon people. In yeah, the that's what it was. And he just <laughs> left it here. Oh, Greg, you gotta, you gotta clean this place up, man. It's been a couple I'm, days. I'm pretty sure liquids is bad for paper yeah, in general. It's probably, I don't know if he's, uh, I, oh, wait, he's coming back. We should probably take a look at this stuff. All right. All right so, uh, uh, so this month, so I don't know if you guys know this, but we actually have a forum on Daka Daka that is about the most underused units in 40K right. from each faction. Mm-hmm. Um, you can just search underused in the forum tools or search uh, through our name on Partial Arc LLC mm-hmm. on Daka Daka and you'll find it. And I assembled this because I wanted to apply the brains of the community community to essentially find you know assemble because i don't know every army like the back of my hand so assembled the most unused crap widely considered (laughs) probably crap uh from each faction is it mostly banshees i mean banshees definitely they definitely hold a place on the eldar list a special place so anyways uh, I set up a poll for the audience to vote on to be the next subject of our podcast. Yeah. And the votes came in, and the army that they wanted me to use Da-na-na-na. was Imperial Guard. Oh, okay. So The completely underused, the entire army, right? Nobody uses or plays all Imperial of Imperial Guard. Guard. You must use one of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible, I say. Um, no, so... Well, you I, know why it's underused? Because they're now called the Astral Militarum. Oh, yeah, everybody gets confused. Space Military. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's it's Astro Militarum. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then it's, I, I think Militarum Tempestus is like Jeez. the... Because, what are they called? What, what were they it's, called? Excuse like, me, my name is, we are the Astral Militarum Tempestus Hephaestus Moraliscus Decimus Maximus Meridius Decimus. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to see how long it could go. I, th- I thought bef- there was like four more names to before that. Before I just basically took from 
gladiator yeah i was like i was like that you definitely became a russell crowe's character yeah. at the end of that basically um but even even the the cool what are the what you remember the cool guys with the awesome stormtroopers stormtroopers not even called stormtroopers anymore what what are they called? called scions imperial scions like why uh, would you get rid of the name stormtroopers guys stormtroopers way cooler um, so in, in any case i mean you've seen imperial guard imperial guard is still very popular mm-hmm. but i once again it's another min max you know just Hey, you see the same thing in basically every army. You see maybe a few layman Russes, some Wyverns, of course. God, those, those things just um, love to show up everywhere. Yeah, tons of Chimeras and then like maybe an allied Imperial Knight because those are not popular or anything. Yeah, Imperial Knights. They're, uh, nobody ever knows or sees those. Right? No, no, they're just like hit, hit or miss, you know. It's they're just like, like a small tank, right? They've got like a couple. It's like just like one guy. It's, just like a, it's a one guy, it's right? It's a knight. He's just it's got armor and a sword. Just, just one armor and a sword. <laughs> He's so out of place. He gets killed very easily. I don't know why really people take him, but yeah, very strange. Well, um, good luck to you, people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so what uh, the essentially the community suggested that I try and make a list out of is something that I actually did not have a lot of familiarity with, which Ooh. is Rough Riders. Rough Riders. Have you even ever heard of Rough, Rider- I Rough ha- Riders? I have, but I've like like long, long, long time ago. I think like I've page through Imper- old imperial guard before it's guys riding horses right it is hor- it is cavalrymen i never see those ever no and there's a reason for that so essentially the uh, rough riders by face value mm-hmm. are just garbage <laughs> like <laughs> they're cavalry yes so they're fairly fast mm-hmm. but they don't have like scout or, or anything, anything that would put them relatively close. They also only are one wound, toughness three, and a five plus save. Their horse doesn't give them any defense. Yeah. They can't hide behind old war horse and just help him take a bullet for it him. It was one thing that was very odd when I was especially looking at the new book is that they're not T four like most like bikes and any type of mount. Anything that's on anything. A yeah. mount of right. some kind, like Thunder Wolves, like they add one to toughness, but for Rough Riders it does not. I mean you still gotta get through that horse. I mean that's still a lot of you yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, you look at like old War One videos or Steven Spielberg's film War Horse, and you're, you're right. like, those guys are low leaning. Like, there's definitely way more horse than there is guy. Are these now? Are these regular uh, Imperial horses? Or are these like robot horses? Are these monster robot horses? Now, a hybrid? see, here is the interesting part. Stuff I did not know about uh, specifically Rough Riders is one. Most Rough Riders are actually like primitives. Really. They pull most Rough Riders of backwards planets, essentially cultures that are, like, pre-industrial age. So they'd have cavalry as being, like, a regular skill that their warriors have. So they're like, oh, yeah, I mean, this is what we do now. What do you guys do? And then, you know, they just take them and just bring them into space and fight against aliens and shit, because that's totally natural. <laughs> um, I imagine, too, is there is one of the special rules of Rough Riders is the first turn they can't act because they're so, so confused, confused <laughs> and so terrified of future space magic that's happening around them? I think that if, like, depending on your steed, if that was, like, a thing, like, one of the steeds could just have confounded where it just doesn't know what's happening. Special rule, confounded by space magic. <laughs> you cannot act the first turn of the game that you enter. Um, but then you get rage for the rest of the game. You get rage, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so angry at space magic! So, I mean, there's tons of different steeds. You have the traditional Terran steeds, which are like thoroughbreds, you know, 40,000 years from now. So they're just like super horses. Super thoroughbreds. And then you have like, the, you know, we've mentioned before Armageddon with the orcs and like Azkol and stuff like that. They have like cybernetic horses that Do are they? like genetically enhanced. Which, as we know, orcs, since they're so psychically well, no, powerful, not... can we imagine that these horses are just, they're well, like literally the orcs those horses. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking because orcs, you know, they always like make things out of stuff that actually doesn't work, but they're so psychically powerful it does work. I imagine they just take like those fake, you know, the fake horses oh that are God. just they're just a broomstick and a horse head <laughs> but they believe in it so much that they're riding in on these broomsticks i with think there, there there may be a limit to their psychic potential oh, man. but i don't know if it's limited there i feel like that's got to be a real thing i hope so and then they paint the horse the horse yeah, handle red, red so it goes faster <laughs> oh my god somebody make this conversion happen but yeah so like the the imperial guard that are on armageddon they're like very horses are cybernetic and then there's like the the Talern guys that they literally ride like giant brontosauruses what yeah they're just like dinosaurs they're like 30 foot tall four-legged brown they look like brontosauruses wow and then you have some guys that ride giant lizards you're telling me there's a unit in an imperial guard or space military that is dudes riding 
brontosauruses? I mean, if you choose to take that lineage... And this doesn't happen more often? People. Yeah, it's kind of lame. Ugh. I think it, the people just Ride get so, dis- so, so discouraged from what the internet says and face value that they're like, I don't want to use that. <sighs> it's so worth the conversion I mean, potential. Everyone, just imagine in your minds right now an army of World War One, World War Two veterans riding into battle on top of brontosauruses. That's the best image you're going to get in a battle. <laughs> I space can't, brontosauruses, what I do I do? I can't fight space brontosauruses, guys. <laughs> I literally have nothing for it. I can't bring myself to kill any of those majestic creatures. <laughs> majestic, beautiful animals. You um, get this planet. It's yours. So, I was, okay. So then, like, after face value, going through some of their fluff and everything, like, mm-hmm. it's actually pretty interesting. Like, some like i said are just like more feral planets where it's like uh you know pre-industrial warriors that would mm-hmm. normally ride steeds anyway and like i said they could be anything i mean there's people that literally ride like velociraptors and shit like that they refuse to not ever not be riding something it's yes. like i will find something on this planet that i can ride damn it i will they put a steeds. saddle on something yeah they, they put saddles on whatever they can <laughs> find i have yet to see a, a single person challenge a catastrophe devil though if you don't know what that is Look it up. It's terrifying. They are the worst. Literally everything on Katachin is the worst. It, it's it's just terrible. It's a death it's planet. Just a, it's, yeah, it is a death planet. It's literally just like the worst vacation spot ever. I think if Tyranids even landed there, they'd be like, oh, oh shit, did we already do this planet? What? This <laughs> this is fucked up. We're not even like la- No, we're leaving this planet. No way. I, I think there's even some loose suggestion that a Katachin devil is like a super old Tyranid that was left behind. That's probably correct. So they have some cool fluff. But then I started to go through the rules, and I was like, all right, what is so bad about these guys? And by face value, I was actually a little bit confused, because they're actually quite cheap for a fast unit. How expensive? They're only 11 points a model. And they're fast, so they're, like, are they count as being on... They're cavalry. So oh, okay. they're, like, 12-inch move, and oh. they ignore danger, uh, difficult terrain tests. You know, if they stop and difficult terrain they'll take dangerous terrain tests right which you don't want to do because they have five plus saves but that's not good but i mean still an 11 point cavalry unit it's cheaper it's three points cheaper than a space marine Mm -hmm. and it's a 12 inch move unit and then i was like oh well i guess they're supposed to be close combat because they think these things called laser lances or hunting oh they used to be laser lances they're hunting lances now okay and what the hunting lance is it's basically just an explosive on the end of a spear oh that's cool. And uh, the way it works is the first time they charge into close combat, if they use their hunting lance, because they can choose, they actually have a uh, last pistol and close combat weapon if they just don't want to use it. But what it is, is it adds plus two to their initiative, so they become initiative five. Oh, okay. It also adds plus two to their strength, so they become strength five, and it's AP three. Oh my god. Really? So, like, yeah, so on the charge with this weapon, they are actually really good space marine killers. What's the base? What's their base attacks? Is it just one? It's just one, and it's an unwieldy weapon, so that they only have the base guy will only have two on the charge. The sergeant will have three. Still not but I bad. Mean, you still strength five AP three on the charge, two attacks, three attacks. I mean, that's pretty great. I mean, min max units against space marines that'll kill most of the space marines before they get to fight back, and that's the beauty of it too. Is I couldn't believe it, but they have frag and crack grenades for free. Really? So, so they strike it initiative they'll strike at initiative five. Oh my god that's that's actually pretty awesome and just to go with the fluff of these guys i love the ideas that on these feral planets that they have to hunt things that they can't just stab them when they stab them they must explode them because yes. they are that dangerous exactly now here's the downside to that weapon okay it's one use only right so you know because obviously it explodes and then they that's there's nothing left of it and they just have to throw it away true but that initial charge they also once again their cavalry so hammer of wrath so they have the hammer of wrath mm-hmm. and then they have their laser will that count will, it, will that th- will that count the five strength as no because well? it's all it's base strength oh uh, that's true but still i mean the hammer of wrath which is basically just an extra attack at their normal base strength mm-hmm. and then the hunting lance strike like you most even 10 man space marines will do- lose most of their guys to that oh yeah before they get to strike and i mean any other army you're charging into too just space marines aside i mean you'll you'll wreck that squad yeah i was like how is this so bad and then I, another thing that I came back to is that they actually two of them can get access to their special weapons so you can give 
uniquely enough, two of them, you get rid of their hunting lance. Mm -hmm. You give them melta guns. Oh, shit. And you can give the sergeant as well uh, melta bombs and a power weapon. So he has something that's AP3 to strike with after the hunting lance is gone. And so, uh, you know, I did did the math and a fully kitted out squad of 10 of them with the sergeant, Mm -hmm. two melta guns. And then the sergeant has melt a melt bomb or melt bombs and a power weapon is only 150 points. That is not bad at all for a 10 man cavalry squad. That's awesome. It's super cheap. You could have so much cavalry. Yeah. So essentially, with melta weapons too, surprisingly. Yeah, and that I was thinking of, I was like, holy crap! I mean, they're only BS three, like no, normal guardsmen, sure. But I mean, the chance that you could actually on a transport get a pen with a melta gun explode the vehicle and then kill the contents inside is not bad and pretty yeah pretty high with the squad and then like like i said if it was like space marines and rhinos or like imperial guard vets in chimeras or the dire avengers and a wave serpent i mean like oh yeah they're dead pretty much anything left outside after the thing it goes is gonna get charged and eaten oh absolutely so then the list i came up with i was like all right we're gonna go full blown with this yeah absolutely we're gonna do two combined arms detachments just two we're doing two full detachments so we are doing six squads yes six squads of rough six, riders ten squads right so six, 60 men charging 60 up on horses. horses charging up on velociraptors brontosauruses I mean, you gotta get a little everything i mean everything guys i mean you're just gathering up a full cavalry army. but make sure they stay dinosaurs it absolutely has to be di- has dinosaur to be combat. dinosaurs people <laughs> please very important note so yeah so six squads of them and then uh two basically just commissars for your hqs for each detachment uh because they're cheap and uh, your troops are just vets with more melta guns, so it's just more stuff that can kill vehicles so that they can charge the contents. Exactly. So you're basically laying out any of the heavy tank or heavy armor that's going to block your guys, and they're just sweeping in in waves, clearing them out. Yeah, I mean, even uh, even just thinking about it, I was like, 12 fast melta guns. Yeah. That's not bad. No, not at all. And then for any of like the bulk infantry, the stuff that they wouldn't want to take out, I have two wyverns added to the the heavy sports slats. And they're five up saves, right? They're five up saves. Now, here's the funny thing. If you throw points for points against a bunch of bikes and a bunch of cavalry, bikes with grav guns, because that's what they take, they're going to have a really difficult time killing down these units before they get to them and sweep them. They'd probably have to ditch the grav guns and just use their bolt guns. Exactly. Exactly. And making them have to get rid of a, well, I don't know, I think it's a 15-point upgrade for a grab gun. Essentially like, making those those points useless. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. It also makes it so, I mean, there's 60 of them. Yeah, like, that's Space Marine bikers, that they match the speed of bikers. It's just like, I don't know of a bike army that want to get close to that army. Exactly. Right. At the very worst, they're going to get tar pitted into the ground because they're going to lose the majority of their guys in that first charge. Yeah, so I was like, I came up with this, like, I was like, what's a cool Blitzkrieg strategy? And essentially the Blitzkrieg strategy is that you have the four Chimeras Mm -hmm. up front. Okay. And then all of the squads of horses behind it, so they get cover So they're providing cover. Gotcha. And you Blitzkrieg them up, and then if you have something like a Space Marine armor or things that have anti-armor but are close range, go for the Chimeras, then suddenly they're being getting dangerously close to assault range to the real ca- rear cavalry exactly i i mean i'm kind of excited it sounds like actually a really fun list <laughs> just blanket the field with horses sorry not horses dinosaurs space dinosaurs space dinosaurs and then chimeras and you just just flood them with rough riders yeah i don't know what you, what do you do against that I, what you do do is you play the song that everyone's been thinking of the dmx song you know stop drop Pet him down, open up shop. Whoa. <laughs> no. That's how rough riders roll. <laughs> Stop. Dro- <laughs> You, just, know, the, you just play the DMX song, or the Rough Riders song, right? That's what you just, and then they just walk away sad. Well, you just, I think, came up with the name of this list. It's just called DMX. It's it's called DMX's Rough Riders. DMX's Rough Riders is the name of this <laughs> list. That's amazing. Oh my god! You'd have to play that song as you're on, about on, to charge on loop for like two and a half hours <laughs> for a whole game session. That's terrible. Oh man. Oh boy. That'd be pretty glorious. Well, this is awesome i've learned so much about imperial guard rough riders and uh and we've all learned a little bit more about dmx which is what really this podcast <laughs> really is for yeah. what really counts um all right well guys 
Now we'll be leaving the Brown Library and going into our final segment, the DACA of DACAs. So what is our favorite comment out there on the DACADACA.com forums? Well, the line that inspired me to do this, I guess, brazen list <laughs> of, so brazen. of Rough Riders for was from the user named Chaz Sexington. <laughs> Awesome username, by the way. Full shout out. Chad Sexington. Chaz. Oh, Chaz Sexington. Even better. (laughs) Who am I? I'm Chaz Sexington, you son of a bitch. (laughs) Chaz, I hope that's how you introduce yourself every time someone asks you your name again. Uh, I would be very disappointed if you did. Please, always. Um, But so he says he's he's actually, I believe, the one who had put in the mark for Imperial Guard Rough Riders. Okay, great. And he says, them poor, misbegotten, ignored, and downright awful Rough Riders... But screw all of that, because they are dashing cavalry, ta- cavaliers. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's not wrong. Chaz Sexington is uh, is not wrong. No, I mean you can say what you want about them, but they're goddamn cavaliers in 40k. They are. There are <laughs> cavaliers in 40k, and it's pretty fantastic. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that was uh, that was episode six of Roll to Seas. We'll be posting a new episode every month. If you'd like to download more episodes or check out other similar podcasts like Because Comics or Blockbuster Punch Up, head over to partialarc.com. That's arc with a C. Of course, you can email us any questions at roll to seas at gmail.com, or you can follow us on the forums on DACA DACA. We've got our, as Andrew had mentioned before, just search Partial Arc LLC and please throw out what other, uh, misbegotten lists or uh, or units that nobody ever uses and hopefully we'll throw it on our show for next month and of course you can follow us on twitter at partial arc thanks for listening and your fun fact for this month is so 40k had some humble origins and you may not know this but space marines in the origins of 40k were actually criminals what Space Marines were convicts sealed in their suits. Oh my god. In order in basically endless servitude. It was their prison. So they're space Australia? I, 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 essentially, yeah, like and they That's had like ha- they had like explosion collars in their suits and shit. So oh my if they god. tried to like flee, they They were the them. first suicide squad. Yeah. <laughs> that does make sense if anyone doesn't know who the suicide squad is. No, not really. Why did I choose to end on that note? I have no idea. Terrible. <laughs> this is terrible podcasting. <laughs>